Olin once again, and salutations to the Truth Corps, whoever and wherever you may be on the planet. Now, I know, indeed I do, better than anyone else, that I've been subjecting you to a fairly strong dose of poetry lately. And I also know that poetry in the genre of lyric, which is what I write, lyric poetry, is not to everyone's liking. So if you don't care to hear it, go away now. But I am going to introduce you to a poem that is one of the most famous poems of the 20th century. You may have heard it, you may know it, you may have heard certain lines from it. For instance, the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity, end quote. Have you ever heard those lines before? Well, you may not know that they appear in a poem called The Second Coming, which was written around 1921 by the Irish poet W.B. Yeats. Now, to this day, over a hundred years later, people often cite this poem as a description of the critical circumstances of the moment in which we live. Indeed, 1920, 1921, after the First World War, also at the time of the Irish Revolution, was a tumultuous and dangerous and painful time, full of enormous confusion and suffering. And Yeats, who was in some respects a political poet and paid attention to the circumstances of his time and was deeply concerned for the fate of his country, Ireland, sometimes refers to such circumstances. And this is certainly the most famous case where that applies. Now, I bring your attention just for a moment to the title. Well, the second coming, of course, is a meme that comes out of Judeo-Christianity. And so there is a narrative reference, a narrative subtext that goes to the belief system and the religious mythology, if you will, of Christianity. The idea that the Messiah came and was rejected and that the Messiah will come again and everyone's waiting for the Messiah to come. You know, I've talked talked about this a lot. So Yeats picks up that trope and he uses it to give the poem its direction and its thrust. The last lines, the last two lines are often cited as well. And what rough beast, its hour come around at last, slouches toward Bethlehem to be born? End quote. Another famous line. So the second coming, which is a short poem, is really important and relevant today. And as I say, it's often quoted. Now, I'm going to read the poem in full, It only takes a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to do something else. What else am I going to do? I'm going to convert it into another poem. Now, going back 12 years or better, we've hit the 12-year mark significantly in a number of ways. But going back 12 years or better, I developed a series of poems which I called the Yeats Conversions. Now, I've been a lover of Yeats since I was 16. He was, along with Dylan Thomas, my favorite poet in my teen years. I memorized many of his poems by heart, and you can literally say that I have them registered in my DNA. I know these poems at the cellular level. So what happened around... 2008, really, is when it began. So we're looking at, uh, what, 14 years, okay? A half cycle of Saturn. Due to the circumstances of a particular encounter I had at that time with an extremely lovely and intelligent woman of Irish ancestry, 
Yeats came back to me, and I found myself spontaneously opening up the book of his collected works, which I have right here, more or less randomly looking at a poem and immediately converting it into another poem without even thinking about how I did it. And I did this a good many times. So that is the collection of the Yeats conversions. And there is the first volume called Refuge for the Unborn. And there is the second volume called Tantra Outbound. So I'll read Yeats first in the original. And then, if you don't mind, I'll read the conversion. And you can toggle back and forth between the two. And you can see if it amuses you in any way, if it intrigues you to log on to the meaning of the conversion. For instance, that famous line, the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity, appears in the conversion like this. The worst actors command the scene, while decent folks just linger on the screen. So you see what I've done is I've used the same themes, the same rhyme schemes, the same meter that is in the original poem of Yeats, and I've taken it and I've done what you might call a cover on it, but the cover actually transforms it into another poem. And the title of that poem is Dead Reckoning. So here's the Yeats in the original Turning and turning in a widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, and the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of Spiritus Mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in the sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again, but now I know that twenty centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast its hour come round at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. And here is the conversion. Dead reckoning. Turning and churning in a sickening spin, the life that can no longer hold its center rankles down to ruin, turns panicky, as if it would seek balance in mere anarchy. A tide of sewage erupting on the mind turns innocence into a mortal crime. The worst actors command the scene, while decent folks just linger on the screen. If human fate invites a great correction, as sure as hell, the vector of direction must be dead reckoning. It goes where it is heading, Unless anima mundi reveal the lucid play of animation, no slouching beast is on the way. But this whore is bound to show the world what she has in store. The great beast has our number. That's 18. Which no Talmudic voodoo can defeat, nor can a technocratic enterprise that runs on fear and absurd deceit rest from the verdict of 3,000 years, the scapegoat-pelted blind archontic fiend 
slouching toward Gotham City to be slaughtered. <laughs>